Hello everyone, this is Jean-Michel of the OSIA team and I am going to show you how to contribute to OSIA score on this video. So what is OSIA score? OSIA is a software for interactive art. It's a kind of sequencer for audio but also all kind of things useful in shows, video, DMX, MIDI, OSC, all kind of useful controls for shows and things like that. So where to find OSIA? So on the internet, of course, like everything, the website address is osia.io. And on the website, you can find a menu with all the important things. Right now, we don't want to download it. We are going to build OSIA score and learn how to contribute software code to it. So we are going to go to the wiki. So on the wiki, we can find build and install, which is the page that has all the required information for creating a build and contributing to it. And on this page, we can read if you want to develop score, then follow hacking on score. So this is what we are going to do. We are going to develop on score. So um, there are a lot of instructions, but if you just want to get started quickly, there are free guides for your operating system. So this video will be done on Ubuntu 19.10, but there are a lot of various guides for various Linux distributions, Windows, Mac OS. So here we are here in 19.10, and we will have to simply follow the first few lines of this guide to install the required dependencies. And then we will stop at this part, which is already done on that computer, but nonetheless. So this will be done on a terminal, so fire up your terminal and start running the command. So for instance, here apt update. So all the commands have to be done with sudo, of course. Um, the apt command, of course. And um, it will be very fast because I already did it. Okay, so everything is, is installed. Same for here. I just show you this. And these two commands are to install Qt. So OCS score is built in modern C++ with the latest version of Qt. And Ubuntu doesn't provide the latest version. So we use a Qt install which uh, allows to fetch the latest version of Qt. And uh, this line, and I won't run it because it will overwrite some stuff, uh, which will greatly increase the build time, and I don't want to increase the build time. But run this command, and um, it will create this folder in your home with this installation of Qt. So you can check that everything we've heard is here, and what we want is uh, the files that are here. And another thing that we're going to do is to install Qt Creator as a development environment. So Qt Creator can be downloaded um, on the Qt website. Uh, it is also available on the Ubuntu repositories, but at the moment the version on Ubuntu is quite buggy and the official version, even the beta one, works much better. So uh, you can just go to the Qt website, go open source, um, blah, 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 you go at the bottom, download the Qt online installer, and here you can, you will be able to download and install Qt Creator, like that. Um, when you're done, you should have a folder on your home directory. Here I have Qt Creator 4.12 beta 2, a bin, and Qt Creator here. So we can run it, and you should have this. And the next steps are to clone the score repository. So again, copy paste this line. So here I already have it, um, my score folder. A very important thing is to put the recursive here because we use submodules, git submodules to um, use some dependencies and if you don't put this flag then you will have build issues because not all the code will be here. So and once you have done this command then you should have in your home 
this score folder with all the source code. Now, um, these steps are if you want to build through the command line, but here I'm going to show you how to configure KubeCreator. So, building with KubeCreator. So, uh, now we are going to see how to run KubeCreator, load the source code of OCS score inside it, and run a build. So, here I'm going to choose KubeCreator, bin my KubeCreator binary. And first, we are going to have to do some configuration. So, um, to build more easily, we use Silang and Ninja, which are uh, faster tools than the defaults that come with Ubuntu. So how do we do that in Creator? We can go to Tools, Options, and uh, so the black screen is a bug because I am in a virtual machine. This shouldn't do that on your normal computers. And here um, you will see desktop. So here, what we can do is something like clone, and we'll call this store. And this is a kind of your build configuration. So it's a set of compiler, cube version, CMake version, debugger, uh, which will be used to build a given project. So the first thing is to uh, go and look for the Qt version that we installed earlier. So it will be in your home folder, Qt 5.14.1, bin, and you have to select QMake here. And it's the only thing you can select. Press apply. And now we are going to be able to choose here Qt version, Qt 5.14.1, okay, apply. And as a compiler, we want CLAN, C and C++. And finally, CMake, we just want Ninja, we don't want the code block things. This isn't harmful, but this is just slower. Uh, apply, okay. And this is all that we need. Then we can do projects um, score, and here we will select cmakelist.txt. This is the project file of OCS score, so we use cmake as a build system. Then press open, and here we will, you, will, you should see something like that desktop with debug, release, blah, blah blah blah. And we can check this, and this is a build that. I, I had already made before, which will be much much faster to use. Um, so, and we can press configure project. Okay, and we want the score, or we actually want the score one, so the default one doesn't have a Qt version because we haven't installed Qt on Ubuntu repositories. We have installed our own recent version of Qt. And when you see this, when you see the green button, it means that everything is ready to build and run and, uh, and contribute. So you can press this, and it will be very fast because I have already done the build, but if you are on a slow computer, wait 10 minutes for the first build, and then subsequent build will be much faster. Um, and to run, you can press this, and if at some point you have bugs, then you can run in GDB with this button. So now we just want to run. And, oh, and we will have an issue because we are on a virtual machine. Um, okay. So, two things. First thing is disable OpenGL because this doesn't work on virtual box. And second thing, here is to um, remove the settings. Yeah. Okay. Um, so one very useful keyboard shortcut is Control R, which will uh, run. Okay, run the software, and this is OCS Store. So this is what you should see after a working build. Um, and we will just configure the audio engine um, because we don't have sound on this computer, so we just want yeah, okay, to check that this works. Um, so the score user interface is built on a plugin system. Uh, so all the panels, all the elements of the user interface are plugins written in C++. 
and um, we'll see how we can add one small plugin that will create a control thing. So this is, for instance, what we can do is have um, an LFO like this. So we are going to do something much simpler, so which is um, just creating a random value every bit. So to check that things work, for instance, we can do this, signal display, connect, press play, and we can see that our LFO is indeed sending waves. Uh, we can see that the triangle wave is buggy, but that's not the issue for today. And okay, and that's all we want to see. Um, so one thing is that I am going to clean the source code of the score. Okay, get status. This is quite slow. Check out and, and uh, remove this file, which I forgot. Okay, so back to our code. So here on the left panel of QCreator, you can export the source code. So the source code of score is divided in two parts, a base library which provides things such as widgets and um, undo redo systems, commands, uh, some useful graphic widgets like color choosers, that kind of things, and the plugins. So the plugins are what implement the actual meat of the software. So everything is built on those plugins. For instance, Device Explorer was the left panel, uh, Scenario is the central panel, Inspector is everything on the right, and then many processes are in the plugin FX, so for effect processes. Uh, so we can see, for instance, the LFO process that we saw just before. Um, so the source code for every plugin is quite contained, most of the time in a single file. Uh, for instance, a audio looper also. Uh, and something very simple is the game plugin. So the game plugin just takes an audio array and multiplies it by some value. So this is your classic volume button. And it is quite useful as um, an example to start with because it, it is very simple and it has everything needed to get started. So to, what we are going to do is to make a small plugin which generates a random value. And to do that, we are going to copy that file into a new file. So, so we can just do open the terminal here, right click, and copy gain, and we will call, call our file randombits.hpp. Uh, we must add this file to this make, this make list. So here I can just copy and add random bit. And cube creator should uh, pick up the change so you can tell it run CMake. So it will rescan and reparse the project files. And here we shall see our new file, random bit. Um, and we will start renaming things. So for instance, like here, random bit. Uh, give it a name here, here, that kind of thing. And one, oh, and I press Control Q. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> um, I try to disable Control Q on my computers, but since this is a very new virtual machine, I forgot. So, <laughs> yay. And we are on FX and on our random bit file. Okay, so um, I just did something very, very important, which is called using the locator. So Qt Creator has this neat keyboard shortcut, which is Control K. And um, if you type nothing, you can see all the available actions. For, for instance, I can go to any class in my source code. I can just type the first few letters uh, or to any file, random bit. Um, it's very fast to navigate the source code like that. I don't need that, I don't need that. So, and uh, this is our source code, so I will zoom in a little bit so that you can see better. So, anatomy of a score plugin. So, for simple plugins, we have stuff like this, uh, which, 
fits in one file, as you can see. And we first declare some metadata about our plugin. So what's its name? What kind of plugin is it? So here it will be a control plugin. And the name is whatever you want. Uh, category is used to display some information to the user. And we'll add a nice description, simple and generator. And one important thing is this. So this is what actually differentiates your plugins from each other. So you mustn't just choose a number at random. You must use proper unique identifiers. So for this, there is a useful um, Unix command, which is uh, called UUID gen. So I'll just open another terminal, run the command UUID gen. And this generates a new random value. And it is important that you actually use UUIDs, else it won't work. And then we declare what are the inputs and outputs of our process and control. So we won't have any control, we can just remove that line. We won't have any inputs, we just have one output. And it won't be audio, it will be a value, a random integer. Um, and, and that is all that is needed to create a small plugin. So then we remove all this source code, which doesn't make sense anymore since this isn't a game plugin. Adapt. Um, so this is the function that will be run every time. So if you know, for instance, true data or max MSP or that kind of thing, it always comes with a function that is called repeatedly. And here this function is called run. And its inputs will be what we say here. So here we only have an output port. So input ports are const references, output ports are references, and things happen magically. Then what we want to do is to uh, say to score, hey, I have created a new plugin. Please register it and allow the user to create it. So this is done in this score underscore plugin underscore fx file. And here we will just include our new plugin, random bit. Okay. Uh, and add it to the big list here. Copy, paste. And it's called random bit. Okay. And here we will compile to check if everything is correct. And if it is not, then we will certainly have heaps of compile errors. So for some reason on this virtual machine, the build step is super long. It shouldn't be like that in your actual computers. But this is a bit infuriating right now. So while this compile, um, we can try to think of how our source code will be structured. So this function will be called every 64 milliseconds, uh, every 64 audio samples, sorry. And we want to detect when we are running on a bit and then just output a random value. So we can check that our thing was compiled correctly. So I put it in control and here we can see random bit provided by OCI score. So this is what is here, author, and kind. Uh, one output is what we said, and a simple random generator. It's the description here. So the thing was picked up correctly. And for instance, we could do something very simple, which is uh, hello world. Just add a debug message to see things happen. Um, and we can print the time uh, at which this is happening. So token request is part of the um, temporal model of OCS score. It's basically all the timing information for this invocation of this function. So, and this is just the time in Flix. So Flix is the time unit that we are using inside OCS score. It's a very, very small division of a uh, second. And then we will have to map that to the um, real time in which we operate and the musical time that we want if we want something that is on every beat. 
Um, so this first we check that we can see our function being called regularly. Right now, if we put it here, we can just drop it here. And if we play, it, it will do absolutely nothing. Um, and since this is a debug build doing nothing costs 1% of CPU. Um, and then, okay, oh, it starts the inversion. So one useful feature when developing OSIA is that um, it restores what you are doing upon the crash. So uh, something that I always use is that I make it crash and then I can restart exactly where I was. So here we can see that it picked up where we at what we were doing. And uh, now we should see some debug messages occurring very regularly. Okay, so this is uh, the time that is being spawned here in the console log window. So and we can see the rate at which things are occurring. Um, and now what we want to do is puts values here. And once we do that, then we can display those values, we can send them through OSC, that kind of things. Uh, so here, for instance, uh, it won't ask me to restore what has crashed. So another thing is, for some reason, you, want, you don't want this, and uh, it will be much more fun to use. So, um, Thankfully, we provide a lot of useful functions to do that kind of things. So for instance, um, the token request thing has a few methods, which are uh, stuff like uh, musical um, get quantification date. So get quantification date is um, basically a way to only do something when we are on the time, on the musical time. So for instance, uh, what we want to do is uh, get physical quantification date. Rate is, for instance, uh, if you want a part or not, it's four. If you want a, uh, no, it's one, sorry. One force. Um, and what else samples is a variable that you get from here. So basically there are two temporal dimensions, the dimension of the data model, which is in six, which is very precise, and samples, which is what our audio card speaks. So we want to convert into samples to read and write from the inputs and outputs of our um, process. And uh, now we are going to spam quite a bit less. So uh, here we use an optional, so get physical configuration dates um, returns an optional time. So we can press F2 to go to the definition. And uh, physical time is in samples. And we can see that this function will only return a true value, a true optional, a valid optional, if we are actually in that time. So we can do something now such as time. And in this case, uh, so time is just an integer. And in this case, it will only show the hello world message when we are actually on a temporal division. So I'm not sure what it is, uh, one fourth is actually part or not, but it should be much at a much slower rate than what we saw earlier. Um, yeah. And then what we are going to want to do is to write a value to the output. So um, what we want to do is this port, uh, we will call it output instead, so do something like output.write value, um, yeah, value uh, zero, and at time, okay, and it finished running. So first, let's check our uh, timing thing, um, random bits. Okay, let's see the bug log. Okay, and as you can see, now it occurs on every bit. So our function is only called on these bars. And the number here, now it's not flicks, it's the offset in the current audio buffer. 
in samples. So that's why it's random values. It's not relative to the beginning, like um, like the value that was in the token request. It is relative to um, this actual audio buffer, which is generally a small number of samples, like 1,512, something like that. And now we are going to simply add some code that uh, outputs a random value. Um, so we are not going to use that. We are going to use this include random Uh, I have a kind of random function which is much more useful than this, which is in um, third party Libosia. So, this is a kind of third party library that we use. I just don't remember exactly how to call it. Um, oh man. Uh, so, what we can do is go with the file system instead, uh, third party. Yeah, third party random 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 RND RND random HPP. So this is a very small random library that I made, which is on GitHub, um, which has a couple of useful functions. So it actually uses um, so thanks to this guy and another guy for impl important uh, random. random Recommendations and um, it comes with very simple functions which gives you a random number between two bounds. Uh, and it will be something like rnd uh, rand, and let's say something between 0 and 1 because that's most useful in audio context. And here it's the position at which it will be written either to the sound card or to OST messages. And it's just the time that we are getting here because this is in physical time. And if we do that, and after a painstakingly long little time, we shall have something that actually outputs value to the outside and that we can route to OSC devices and things like that. So it's building. So if you want to check the function, so not everything is documented, but you can, oh, one very important thing, you can come and ask us for help on Gitter, uh, so on GitHub, uh, OSIA score, so this is the repository, and if you look at the readme, there is Gitter, join chat, and uh, you can just come and say hi, and we'll try to help uh, to the best of our abilities. Okay, and um, now it finished building, and um, let's see if I plug my signal display here. I can do that, and connect the cable, press play, and um, does it work? No, it doesn't work at all. Oh, it did actually, I forgot, but it runs it on every time. So here we are getting a random value between 0 and 1 at every new time interval. And that's it, we are done. And um, so thanks for watching and hoping to see you soon contributing to the score. Thanks.